This is not the problem. This is. If you didn't see it, then this video will show you why the biggest problems of Battlefield 2042 aren't the obvious bugs, but the basic intentional design changes which might stay with the game forever. Before it launched, this is what we imagined Battlefield 2042 would be like. What we get in reality, however, is this. Entire servers dedicated to bot stomping in order to fast track unlocking new items and leveling up. The game even allows you to lower the health of the bots so that they die with one shot and that the damage they deal are also drastically lower to the point that you could charge into the entire bot team and not be afraid of dying. Which is in fact what everyone on the human team does because there usually aren't enough bots to kill for everyone. Especially if they die with one shot. Search for the software you need, add to cart, daan ka sa payment options nila. Wala pang 5 minutes, finished! May legit working CD key ka na para sa Windows mo. Gamitin ng aming code para makakuha pa ng discounts. Kaya kung naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software, Check out cdkeyoffers.com We look like a pack of horny teenagers itching to get a quick fix. In short, the ranking system doesn't matter because a complete noob in FPS can outrank anyone just as long as they play long enough in these ridiculous bot farms. The worst part about it? This isn't a bug. It was intentionally designed this way by the developers. In this video, I list down the things which make Battlefield 2042 not only not fun to play, but which DICE does not intend to do anything about because they are technically not bugs if they intended it to be this way in the first place. Number 1. It's very lonely in this game. One of the major highlights of 2042 is the introduction of 128 players going at it in a large open world battle zone. This is a big leap forward from the maximum 64 player count introduced in Battlefield 2 back in 2005. However, even when playing in a full server, it feels more lonely than it ever has been for two very simple reasons. The first is that there is no all chat. You literally can only chat with your squad and your other teammates. Have you ever run over anyone, shot down a helicopter with a dummy RPG, and typed in all caps that they got wrecked? Yep, there's no way for you to gloat or even laugh with the players on the other side, the same way other famous Battlefield plays have happened before. <laughs> yes. Yes. Being able to laugh at an inside joke shared by two players on opposite teams is part of the fun. It's what usually makes a match more memorable. Not so much your team winning or losing, in fact. The true fun of past battlefields is all about finding small personal experiences within a gigantic sandbox of chaos. These personal experiences are lost when the characters you play alongside with don't feel like real people. I now miss the many times in Warzone when I downed an opponent and they trash talked my whole family before they disconnected. That, at least, felt more real, albeit a sign of dwindling civility in the world. Second, there is no way to see anyone else's scores other than your own and your squad mates. In a 128 player match, my score is only relevant to me if I have a point of comparison. When you press tab, you are met with all sorts of useless information. I don't care about ribbons or just my squad stats. Battlefield is meant to make you feel like you are part of something bigger than just yourself. And without any points of comparison, you don't know if you are actually getting better in the game. Even if you count how many kills you get in a match, write it down on an excel sheet, it wouldn't matter because some matches are easier than others, depending on the skill of the players you're fighting against, and the addition of bots also waters down the scoring, since they are obviously easier to kill than actual players. In short, it doesn't feel like you're playing with others at all because of how anonymous and closed off the game feels. Number 2. No incentive to play. 
Dice treats players as anonymous numbers with names. The mere fact they place a live player count at the bottom right corner when you press tab means even they feel the need to reassure players that they are playing with real people and not just bots. But even when it is a full server, the game intentionally hides all the names of your teammates and your opponents with the single exception of you and your squad mates. You need to go into a separate menu screen altogether which requires two steps and then you can browse who are real people and who are bots as well as what system they are using to play the game. Bots are always easier to kill because they are predictable and even if they occasionally one-up you, it's not the same as losing to another breathing person. If that were the case, then all AAA FPS games would just make single player matches with bots and do away with multiplayer altogether. This need to make you dig each time to see how many real people you are playing against is unnecessary time wasted for players. Personally, I don't want to play a 128 player match in which only 12 players are real people. It would be akin to just playing single player altogether and it would feel less competitive and overall less meaningful. And again, what's the point in seeing how many players there are if there is no way to compare your performance? Because the only stats you can see are your own and the three other people in your squad, assuming your squad is complete, by doing this, DICE is telling people to disregard kill death ratio comparisons and to focus on squad based team victories instead. Meaning, we should focus on being the best squad rather than the best player in the game. This is too optimistic for its own good. It is very difficult to coordinate with a squad of strangers and DICE has not made it this any easier by not including voice chat at launch. At no point during any of my playthroughs did I have an active squad chat. Instead, I got a squad mate who drove the tank to face a wall until I got out of the gunner seat because he wanted to be the gunner. And I don't see anything wrong with admiring really good players for their individual skills, whether they be on my team or the opposite team. A lot of times, I play harder and better if I know I'm one of the players contributing the most to the war effort for my team. But now, I feel like I'm just a screw in a machine who doesn't deserve to know the true value of my contribution, thus not encouraging me to play my best. I feel like I'm a test subject in a controlled experiment in which I can't choose which team to be on. You also can't switch teams unless you quit the server altogether and rejoin and hope you are on the team that you want to be on. And I can't talk to the other experimental subjects, i.e. the opposite team. Even in combat, I can't tell if my gun is on single fire or full auto unless I'm aiming down sight. Previous battlefields introduced hardcore mode in which there is no HUD at all, in which you really wouldn't be able to tell what your gun is set to. However, the default interface for Battlefield 2042 has a HUD which won't tell you what rate of fire your gun is unless you are aiming down sight. This makes no sense on an immersion level because in real life, looking down sight doesn't tell you what rate of fire you're on. With respect to not being able to pick what team you're on is sometimes a good thing. However, if you have played the zombie servers in Portal, it gets boring always being on the zombie team and previous battlefields prevented unequal teams by doing a mandatory auto team balancing. If you're tired of playing on a certain team, DICE is essentially telling you that you need to quit the server entirely and do the whole loading time all over again, which doesn't even guarantee that you'll switch over to the team that you want. Switching teams was as simple as selecting it in a death screen in previous battlefields. Why make this unbearably restrictive? Usually, when a game launches poorly, there is the hope that the developers fix the bugs, which there are a lot of in this case. What is more concerning, however, is that DICE wants you to forget about kill-death ratios, forget about talking to the other team, and forget even knowing how many players are real people. The biggest irony is that the Battlefield series is known for the freedom of being able to do almost anything, whether that be blowing up a wall, planting C4 on a drone, and so forth. However, almost like an authoritarian dictator, DICE single-handedly severed the social connection of what bonded players together and unilaterally chose us to focus on the priorities which don't come natural to us, such as focusing only on ribbons and inside competition with your own squad? We want to give an extremely special thanks to our top fans who helped make all of our work possible. ITX Addict, Rafael James, Ian Meru, Liam Magnae, Richard Onkinko, John Ruben Otia, and Christian Espinosa. It's good seeing all of you so regularly during our streams. And again, thank you so much for the support.